Hello, I'm Mario, and today I'm going to be working on my weight distribution hitch. Now, this is not an instructional video, but I just wanted to show you guys what it is I'm doing to my equipment to make it work for my purposes. And to start off, the hitch itself was set up by the dealer that I bought my travel trailer from, and it worked fine for me getting home. But since then, I have done some work on this Chevy Colorado on the rear suspensions. What I need to focus on today is going off of the manufacturer's instructions, get all of the measurements of my equipment, and then adjust as necessary. And there are a couple of adjustments that need to be done to these weight distribution hitches. And they all uh, can vary from uh, one manufacturer to another from one type to a yet another type. According to this manufacturer's recommendations, it needs to be about an inch higher than what the trailer hitch sits at when the trailer is level. This was originally set up by my dealer and they did an okay job. Uh, they had the ball height hitch at the correct height, but I need to make an adjustment uh, and adjust this ball height down as I measure it from the top of the ball to the ground. Currently it's at 28 inches and I need to have this at 26 inches. So it's two inches higher than it needs to be. And the reason why it's different now than when I picked it up from the dealer is that I did some work on the suspension and raised it up two inches. So the the rear suspension has about a two inch lift currently on it. So that's the first order of business is to lower the ball two inches. And then I'm going to, from there, make other measurements, i.e. I have these, uh, what are referred to by the manufacturer, these are called spring bars. And so I'm going to install these and then also measure the ground clearance of these spring bars. So aside from some fasteners, washers, and the actual ball, uh, there are two pieces, two main pieces here. And essentially this is the, uh, referred to as the shank, maybe the shank weldment. And then here I have the head assembly that the ball attaches to. And so over here, there are two grade five bolts that I can take out and then I can um, spin this shank around. In other words, I can rotate it 180 degrees and adjust the height that way or I can um, use these holes here obviously to make further adjustments. So in my case, I think I need to rotate this 180 degrees and so I will start there. I'm gonna have to see if uh, if I even have the tools to get this off, but let's give it a go. Maybe if I had a cheater bar, I'd be able to do it, but I really need the appropriate socket or the, uh, or at least a larger adjustable wrench. Well, that wasn't very much fun. So anyway, I got this 15 inch adjustable wrench. Hopefully this works. A lot easier than I thought. So 
So there's some spacers in here and that's what allows this to tilt forward. And that's also what helps give it leverage and distribute the weight. So this head assembly here, as I mentioned, it tilts forward and that gives leverage on the spring bars. There's the spacers in there. At any rate, I'm just disassembling this so I can get back to the initial objective of inverting this shank. Okay, so I got it off. And if I look at this uh, head unit here, there's these little spacers here and then so you choose how many to determine how far forward you're going to tilt it and I'm looking at these and they are stamped so I believe I don't know exactly what the number what the stamp means but I believe these are the uh, the hardened washers and they're a specific size and I think it's a half inch uh, inside diameter of the SAE standard versus the USS would be a little bit uh, larger outside diameter and uh, the tolerance on the inside diameter is more uh, strict on the uh, SAE. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and invert this and then uh, try to figure out what height I need with the shank in the down position. So this is different than how it was before. I really need it all the way up to the top as far as this head unit needs to be mounted using this top hole which is actually probably going to bring the ball a little bit more than 26 inches high that's my adjustment for 26 inches for my trailer if I drop down one it's going to be if I drop down one hole it's probably going to be too low so I'm going to dry fit everything using the topmost uh, position here. So with it totally tilted forward, that's 25 inches. And without any tilt, that's 26, not even really 26 inches. So I'm kind of in an in-between spot here. I counted the number of washers. There's six washers here to act as spacers. The unit comes with seven and I have some backup ones. So I can go as many as seven and this is where the second measurement comes in, where I have to measure the spring bars. So hopefully I'm on a level ground here and I can get that as the next step. So I'm just going to insert these in there. Now I can just snug this up here. I can start getting my measurements. What I'm trying to measure now is, is this, and I got 15 inches from the bottom here to the ground. I 
this one looks like maybe 14 and 5 eighths. Everything that I'm doing here with these measurements and calculations, it's all based on the manufacturer's recommendation based on the coupler height of my travel trailer. So the ball is going to connect to that tongue on the travel trailer and there's a number there that is going to give good estimates on where all of this needs to be and as I mentioned using the numbers that the manufacturer is recommending um, this bar right here is supposed to be seven and a half inches <laughs> off the ground um, it's 15 inches so that's going to be difficult I already have six spacers in here so I'm going to uh, I think this is happening for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is I only did a uh, suspension modification to the pickup truck on the rear axle. So the rake of the truck is severe. So this whole thing is kind of pointed towards the sky. Um, so I'm probably going to have to maybe drop this down one notch. I'm going to have to find some sort of compromise. Um, but let's see how far this thing can tilt. I do have some spare washers I did prepare for that um, let's uh, let's see so I've tilted the head unit as forward much as possible so I can still slide the hex bolt through that slot there that's a lot of room <laughs> in between there so we'll have to see but at any rate I'm still not at the seven inches um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this all factors in these are numbers that the manufacturer I keep saying it but these are numbers that the manufacturer are recommending and really the goal is this if you get to the front of the truck the goal is that you don't want your front axle being raised too much or lowered too much you want the weight distributed equally so we can play with these numbers all day long it's not going to mean a damn thing if there's not enough weight on the rear axle or there's not enough weight on the front axle, vice versa. So I'm going to get it as close as I think I can, hook up to the trailer, and then we're going to look at what's going on with that front axle. So I went ahead and I inserted the spacers in there. Those are the ones that I purchased. And they're just the same thing, hardened washers, uh, probably, probably a little bit stronger than the grade fives that were in there and at any rate you can see here that pin still goes through the full thickness of the head unit there ideally you'd go a little bit further but I'm gonna try it like this and see where we're at at least get a measurement it's not as severe of an angle there's still space for this thing to tilt forward. So I'm going to go ahead and cinch it down. So I've got these torqued down and there weren't any torque specifications available on uh, in the instructions but I do know that these are grade 5 and the size and whatnot so um, you know you can probably figure that out but at any rate uh, I did cinch this down so that I could snug up these spacers here I don't really like the length of this uh, hex bolt right here I'm looking at all of these fasteners as temporary. I mean, obviously these cone washers are good still, but at any rate, these grade fives, I'll probably swap them out. I mean, after all, you don't want to use the same uh, nylock lock washers or any lock washer for that matter, um, lock nut. I'm talking about these lock nuts. 
Um, you don't want to reuse those, whether it's a split washer or whatever. I've placed as many spacers in here that I feel comfortable with right now and installed everything. This is at the, uh, the ball should be at the 26 inch height. And right now I'm looking at, so 13 and a half inches on that one. Maybe 13 and 5 eighths on that one. So 13 inches is apparently not gonna be putting enough uh, leverage forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up and see where this gets us as far as pushing weight to the uh, to the forward axle of the truck. I wasn't expecting that and it's good news. I hooked up the hitch, I got the uh, trailer here and then lovely Walmart. But at any rate, the point is, before I hooked up the hitch, I measured the clearance here on the front fender on both sides and I only have a slight variance. So the clearance has increased, but only by, you know, like not even a half an inch. And so that is actually acceptable. Uh, the first time I hooked it up, what I did was I put six links here. And when I did so, this bar was, it was rather level with the ground. Now it's looking like it's not as level, so that's not a good thing. But they do allow for five links here. So considering, you know, all of the other crazy adjustments that we did, I'm, I'm thinking we did pretty good. I, we only raised it, a, you know, like a little more than a quarter inch on the front axle. And it's looking pretty, uh, pretty good. I'm on a, I'm on a little bit of a slope here right now. There's still more work to do, but I'm pretty happy with what we got so far. And the next step will be to scale this out. So it's the next day and I have the trailer hooked up. I got the uh, weight distribution hitch is all connected and got a bunch of camping gear enough to last me for a few nights. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to go over to this public scale and see if I can't get an axle weight on the, uh, the system the way it's set up now. So judging how much the front axle is settling when I use the weight distribution hitch, I don't think it's working too hard, but it's hard to tell because of the leaf spring modification that I did to the rear axle. So it's definitely working, but I don't quite know how much yet. Hopefully it's not too busy. Here's the scale here. So it looks like I got 2,360, then 5,600. Then I got 8,800. All right, well, I was able to do one pass with the spring bars attached to the distribution hitch. And now I'm gonna make another run without the spring bars attached. So let's see what sort of difference we got out of the whole deal. I just gotta get turned around here and lined up. So 2,200, 5,760, 
8,780, 8,780. All right, well, when I get back and edit the, the video, then I'll know what the numbers were. All right, so I've sat down and I've reviewed the numbers that I collected from the scale house. And actually I did some comparing and contrasting between the initial uh, scale that I did when I picked this trailer up. So originally when I purchased this trailer and I picked it up from the dealer, one of the first things I did was I went over to a cat scale and I, and I scaled it there. Um, one distinction with that is when you scale at a cat scale, you pull all the way onto the scales and there will be three or maybe even four sections of scale on that one platform. So you can get very accurate um, scale weights. Uh, and that is very different than getting a rolling weight onto one platform, one scale, like I did over here at the, uh, at the recycling center. So in essence, what was happening there is I was going up a hill onto the platform, getting the front axle on there, getting the drive axle, and then getting the trailer on. So it's, at any rate, it took some some real serious analyzing of the numbers here. Um, and what I've discovered is I've probably moved about 160 pounds forward onto the front axle off of the drive axle using the spring bars. And so that is a comparison of just the hitch having the weight of the trailer versus then adding the spring bars. So that difference is moving 160 pounds forward onto the front axle. And considering we're talking about the rear axle has a gross weight of 3,500 pounds, I think that's pretty darn good. Um, is there room for improvement? Um, probably overall, but considering what I'm working with here and the fact that I'm not really finished, I'm not finished uh, adding weight to both vehicles, trailer and truck, I'm not finished with the suspension work that I'm going to be doing, so on and so forth. And in, in essence, that's what happened here. I did suspension work to the leaf springs, and then that caused me to go around and play with the adjustments, you know, with the tilt angle of that, uh, of the hitch head, and so the head assembly. And so what I'd like to also mention here is that um, the dealer, they did a good job. Uh, I... I was unable, you know, with all of the meticulous measuring and everything, I wasn't able to improve upon what they did. Uh, and so I just wanted to mention that. And one thing that I did was I know that I added more uh, tension on those spring bars than they had. Um, and I think what's going on there is that I'm, I'm just trying to max out that tension. Uh, and I think that the uh, leaf springs that the Basically, the rake of how the pickup truck is, it has a more severe rake. I think that has an impact on uh, on what's going on here, but that's just a wild guess. I don't want to ramble on too much, but the point is that the dealer did a good job. I don't want to, I don't want to portray a message that um, I had to go in there and, and, and fix something that the dealer messed up because that wasn't the case. I had to go in there and make adjustments because of the modifications I did to the leaf springs. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that um, when I'm making these adjustments, I'm, I'm paying attention to how much the suspension is moving up and down on the front axle because what you don't want to do is lighten the rear axle too much because then the weight of the trailer can push your rear axle and that could cause a jackknife in a braking situation or something like that. You have a slight turn and you slam on the brakes, boom, there you go, bam, it's all over. So I wasn't getting too much uh, suspension changes uh, with the spring bars and without about three quarters of an inch uh, drop. And so I think, uh, you know, that, so that's what the, how the scale was very helpful. It, it allowed me to uh, cross check the measurements, you know, I'm going here from just numbers of measuring and looking from afar to actually putting the vehicle on a scale. And then I can really see what those ratios are of the weight movement. Um, so, you know, in conclusion, you know, I'm not sure that this hitch is uh, the ultimate solution, but I'm happy with what I was able to do with these adjustments. I'm satisfied thus far. And I think it's going to allow me to, uh, 
you know, continue making uh, further modifications to the truck. So I'm thinking mission accomplished here. Uh, I've achieved the uh, the goals necessary and I feel safe and comfortable moving forward from this point. You know, taking the, the measures that I did, no pun intended, but uh, at any rate, uh, thanks for watching everybody and I hope this helped uh, shed some light on how you might look at your projects uh, in the future. Um, you know, part of, I didn't mean to mention this, but uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and mention it in that uh, part of what I hope to, part of the message that I hope to send out there is that um, just because you don't know how to do something doesn't mean that you can't kind of stumble and fumble through the process. And so that's part of what I'm doing here is I'm documenting, uh, you know, maybe some of the pain points that that uh, someone that doesn't fully understand how to do this, i.e. me, uh, some of those pain points like, oh, I didn't forecast that this was going to be an issue or, oh, I didn't see this as being an issue. So um, hopefully that'll help you guys uh, figure out how you could navigate through some of these issues. So at any rate, uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.